are gods, we are kings. We march in faith, cause we believe we can. Change the world to what it needs. Stand against our enemies, cause we can. Yeah. Kings demanding change cause we believe we can All right, this one says, is it okay to wear a wedding ring? Who says it's okay to wear a wedding ring in here? By show of hands. Everybody's scared, even though some of y'all want to wear it right now. Some of y'all are scared. All right, who, who says it's not okay to wear a wedding ring? See? See, everybody raise their hand. See that? See, you ain't right. You ain't right. Sisters, hello. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry I didn't see you over there. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. So we're going to go to the scriptures because somebody did have a sincere question about a wedding ring. Is it okay to wear a wedding ring? A, Jediah, pull up origin of the wedding ring. Pull that up. I know something's going to come up on Google. Origin of wedding ring. Pull that up, please. Ah, look at him, the, the darn white man once again. All right, read that. Wedding rings. Uh, history, ancient Rome. In ancient Rome, the groom would present his bride with an iron ring, which is the origin of today's metal wedding bands. The durable material symbolized strength and pre preeminence. Yeah, oh, preeminence. Permanence. Oh, permanence. There's a spirit in Tallahassee when it comes to reading. Read on. <laughs> it is believed that the Romans were the first to have their rings engraved. All right. They think they're the first to do everything. All right. Um, yes, it's pagan. Meaning what? Outside of the Bible, right? Now, we got to go in the Bible to show it, right? Got to always go into the Bible to show it, not just Google. Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. And... Start at 16. Read kind of fast. The Book faster. of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 16. A little bit louder. Thus, in the process of time, That's it. an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. All right. So we got to start there. It says, thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as law. So a lot of things we do in America is by what? Ungodly customs, right? And they deem it as you got to do it. You got to celebrate Christmas. You got to celebrate your birthday. But these are actually ungodly customs that the heathen decided to put as what? As law. All right, read this again. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Come on. And the graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. It says these graven images were worshipped as commandments of kings. By who? By the Romans, by the Americans, by our oppressors. All right. We're going to read on, though. It's going to get even, it's going to get more concrete. Read on. Verse 17. Come on. Whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of this visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end that, 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 to the end that by this, their forwardness, All they right. might flatter. I'm going to uh, jump up real quick. All right, I'm going to jump up. 
uh, to verse 22. I want you all to pay close attention to something. What Joshua just read in verse 16, it said, Thus in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as law. Now pay very close attention to this. This is verse 22. It says, Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of God, which a lot of our people do today. A lot of our people do what? Trust in the commandment of men rather than in the commandment of God, right? Watch this. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. Meaning what? Our people don't even do their due diligence. They don't even research things. They just take it verbatim and continue to follow after their oppressors. Even though their oppressors had us in slavery, they give us the worst uh, living conditions. They put us in the uh, worst situations when it comes to education. But we continue to trust them. Now, so if you don't have the ring as a man, how does the woman look at you? She probably like, look at you like you're stupid and trying to figure out what you're doing. Exactly. Why is that? Read verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 16. Verse 16. Thus in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. It was kept as what? As a law. As a law. Meaning what? Meaning what? That wedding ring, if you don't have that, they basically saying you can't even be married. That's how it's looking. Where's the ring? Where's the ring? That's how the, that's how the uh, Americanized woman perceives it. If you don't have a ring, we can't get married. Because they did what? They allowed that ungodly custom to be kept as a law. Okay? Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor. Do what? Envy thou not the oppressor. The Bible says not to envy the oppressor. Read. And choose none of his ways. Come on. That's it? All right. Y'all understand that, right? So can we use wedding rings? No. Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.